so I just want to situate the interview because, okay, so you got selected for Cannes, the Cannes label. Congratulations on that. You won the Friprizi Prize at TIFF. Um, you didn't go to Ikea to shop for book endings, but you went to the San Sebastian Film Festival, and so you have some cool book endings there. Um, New York Film Festival is next, and technically you are one of only four participants at the weekend edition of the Cannes Film Festival that's coming up shortly in October. And it's worth mentioning that um, they are actually holding a Palme d'Or competition for short films. And if yes. we go back to this year, in 2014, this film was yes. <laughs> part of that lineup. And it's worth saying that this is a needle in the haystack process. The, the, mm -hmm. the chance of you getting into the competition for the short at Cannes is, up, is like 0.001%. So congratulations on everything that's happening to you. Where are you based right now? And sort of like, how do you relate sort of like your surroundings um, and how that, that, um, that corresponds to your reflections on cinema? I'm, I'm based in Georgia, but at the moment I am in here. Paris because I need to uh, go to Cannes uh, at the end of uh, October um, and also I have some things to do so I am here for a month but then I, I can't wait to go back to Georgia actually because <laughs> I really miss my family and um, um, how I think honestly I, I always talk that of course like I am a, I'm a big um, cinema fan I, I really love cinema you know I watch films all the time and uh, I I watch I, I, I need to see things every day and I love to go to the galleries and museums and concerts and my, my mind needs to be stimulated constantly mm -hmm. it, it's uh, there is something I, I, I like to say there is something wrong with me <laughs> in that sense but I, I think that my biggest influence is really my family in a way and the people who I grew up with and who live um, around me in Georgia but I think that watching films and traveling and spending a lot of time outside of Georgia also allows to have a distance to really reflect on uh, my, my, my country in a way and uh, the human condition. And I think it helps me to position uh, uh, my, my characters in more global, um, globally, even though like, I, I am driven to very local, very personal uh, stories, so to say, but being able to have a distance is necessary for me so I can really reflect and understand how does people, how, how does Georgia fit in actually, or how mm -hmm. do we live in Georgia and what's the connection on or this connection? Specifically for beginning, how, how, does, how does the rule setting or insular settings and, and the, the composition of the shots, how is that, how is that filtered or inserted into your writing process? Well, I was, I have, I had a strange writing process for this uh, specific uh, script because uh, I was writing in, in a way, in two parallel versions. One was more for the crew or the financiers and even for the actors to read, which is more classical way of writing the script because I really wanted it to be very easily um, understood. And even though mm -hmm. it was not always easy, uh, uh, for people to read and understand everything because of maybe it's minimalism in, in its way. Uh, but also I was writing my version, which I was working on with a cinematographer and with the, um, with the producers. I mean, everybody knew what I was going for or, and what I wanted to do. Because I think that from the beginning, I think in my process in general, I constantly question what is story and what does it mean to tell a story? Is it just something that happens or is it just an action? Of course it's not. And I really think that cinema is a medium that is young and we have so much to explore. And uh, I, I, I'm just fascinated by everything I can do and how I can approach uh, my process. And it, it's always important for me. I, I don't want to just tell a like, plot, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, not, mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. And I think I was partially, at some point I was in New York because I needed to be away from Georgia and I needed to be in a place where like really nobody would uh, care <laughs> of my existence and that's New York. And I was writing, I wrote the first version and then I went to Georgia with my cinematographer and we really started to write. I started to write, but 
it's really to be on location, to really be physically there because sometimes like my cinematographer and, and he's my closest friend and the closest collaborator. And, but sometimes he gets pissed at me and he says that, what are we doing here? You know, sometimes I just want to spend a week on location while I'm writing, but he's not really doing anything. And I just hang out with my family and uh, I go to see my neighbors. And uh, because it's very important for me to catch the language or to really see tiniest details of how people actually function or uh, how the time flows, it, it's very important for me. From the get-go, there's two sequences that really stick out for me. Um, one where she's checked out and she's literally next to her partner on, on her son's bed. Um, and I mean, uh, you handle exposition with three sentences and we, we completely get the sense of where she's coming from, where she's at. Um, but there's also the body language when she's slouched on the kitchen table. And I, I thought that was mm -hmm. such a brilliant scene and I read into that really quickly. Um, and it sort of foreshadows a lot of the uh, I don't want to say mental anguish, but sort of like where she's going in her thought, where she is in her thought process. So I was wondering if you could uh, discuss that scene specifically. I think that for me, it's, uh, and I was talking with, uh, with an actress a lot about it because she's a brilliant actress and she has a lot of experience in theater and she's very expressive. And I, will, I was constantly discussing with her how to really go to the essence and to really forget about acting and forget fully about trying to express anything but just really be in a space and even when we found this house and i decided that, okay this is the house where we'll film i brought her on location and i asked her to tell me what color would she paint the walls and how would she arrange things and where the bed sheets she would use i really wanted her to be involved because i think this is where the acting starts. It doesn't start like in, in front of the camera. And everything, like sometimes I would just, not sometimes, I just sit next to, I'm always next to the camera on set because I really don't like to work with the monitor and I, I, I refuse to look at the monitor because if I am next to the camera and I connect with what's happening in front of the camera, then I know that I have a scene or I have a shot, but if I'm at the monitor, it's just, um, I, I just lose the connection. And I sit or stand next to the camera and I just talk. Often I do talk to the actors, which of course is a disaster. And I, uh, it was a disaster for the sound uh, process later on. But, but I, think, I guess I'm gonna do it again. Because sometimes I would just tell her that, can you like breathe and then stop breathing? And even, even that was like doing such huge difference. Uh, if she would suddenly just stop breathing and would suspend her breathing just a second longer than it would have been. In, I, I think maybe, I really wish that people could watch this film on a uh, big screen because there are so many nuances. And uh, Ia, the actress, did really a brilliant, really a brilliant job. I, I don't know how to, like I really can't wait to work with her again, first of all, because she has so much plasticity in her performance and sometimes I understand that it was like a bit um, difficult for her as well because sometimes I was not looking for a reason in, spe in specific uh, movement or an action because I think that we don't really do everything for a reason. Sometimes we just exist in a space or mm -hmm. just, just sit down. Mm -hmm. And I was just sometimes telling her that, no, just sit down and... Um, Turn your, turn your back to the camera. And for, for the actress who has such a huge experience on stage in theater, it sometimes was a bit strange. She was like, oh, I need to turn my back. I was like, yeah, I just want to look and see. But I, I, it was all storyboarded and um, shortlisted and it was very precise. So we did not really experiment I guess that much other than with uh, the scenes with the children uh, I would just give them um, quite like I would just tell them what I want them to start to talk about and then the actress knew how to like um, navigate the conversation mm -hmm. with them the rest was just, children have just so much energy and I would just tell them just don't leave this space there's a, this manifestation that occurs where 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 the mother almost resents um, uh, Georgie 
Um, the fact that Georgie shows no faith in the teachings, um, mm -hmm. that, that lack of conviction sort of is, is matched with, with the mother where she sort of like, she says in a, in a nonverbal way, is like, if you don't care, then I won't care. I also got a sense that this boy is part of a larger patriarchal society. And, you know, when he's taking up a certain space and when, when the, the, there's the father, the void of the father, the void then, the, fa the father then inhibits that same space. Like how you sort of like cut those scenes together in a way where that resentment towards a larger patriarchal society could be reflected in her own rapport with her own child. I was wondering if I was reading too much into it. Well, uh, no, I guess uh, there, there is part of that, certainly. I just did not want to, while filming or while working with an actors, I didn't want to talk about this because I want always just to, for, to work on the simplest way of a relationship between two characters because I, I don't like to talk to actors about uh, any conceptual or like reading of the character. No, I just want to talk very like, sim simple, um, uh, way to work with, with an actors. But of course, then when you bring the camera, um, everything starts to change in a way or something else starts to happen, which I guess is cinema. It's something which is beyond what you or actors or anyone can control. It's just the relationship between everything together. And that, that specific scene when she talks to her son, it was like, I, I was like um, doing the shot list because it, in my understanding, there was some sort of a separation between these two characters, but also the need or the want to connect, but they, they really cannot because mm -hmm. they, they are in this one room and they're stuck at home together and she cares and she protects him the way she can. But at the same time, there is already the hints of this connection or it's her need to disconnect also. And I was thinking that um, I just didn't even want to see them in the same shot. Uh, but of course, then later on, I was working a lot about how to create nuances because she, she's a mother and of course she loves her son. I think the tragedy comes from the uh, opposites. I mean, she does love him, but there are things she can't handle anymore. And mm -hmm. I really wanted it to be nuanced and to come across on, on screen. Um, when, when cinephiles first encounter your film, they'll come across uh, the film still that was put out by the team, by, by beginning, the, the beginning team. Um, and it's Yana on the forest ground. Um, and I think we could easily do a masterclass just on this sequence. It's br absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, the, 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 the use of the, the diegetic sound is also something that we see a, a, a glimpse of in your first short. Um, but here I wanted to talk about, there's a flush of warmth that occurs in this character. Um, it's, it, it's, we really don't see uh, light to this vibrancy and it's a very minute thing you would miss it if you weren't paying attention um but i was wondering if you could discuss um uh, your your approach with the uh, arsini in terms of lighting and how the how light gets infused in this moment but then how it's sort of like you know it's vacant and and i want to say the larger portions of the film but there's just a sub, small subtle touch uh, that, that caresses her, her, her face and it's, it's perhaps, uh, I, I want to say perhaps it was a naturalistic thing, but I, I think there's a, a purposeful um, idea there. So, so yeah, how that sort of like... I think it's just beautiful also. And when we were shooting specifically that scene, it was yeah. planned differently. Um, I did a, a shot list and the storyboard, and then we came on set, I, I was on set, and that, that's, I think, the beauty of being really prepared, is that sometimes you can really, um, really not follow your plans in a way. And I was thinking that uh, I, I'm, I'm not getting what I need because it was, um, it was empty, what I was trying to film. And then I said that, 
I need to change because the idea was the same. She's on the grass, and but but the shot was different. And then I said, no, I think this I, this is what I want to do. I really want to look at this woman in the, and I want to see what's going to happen. And we started to film, and everybody actually makes fun of me because of that now. Because even in the process of filming, at some point, cinematographer <laughs> just looked at me, was like. How long are you are we going to come? How much longer are we going? And and I was like, I asked the gaffer, we were trying to catch the light. Uh, it, it's a natural right light, of course, but we were just trying to direct it a bit. And I was like, no, we, we really need to wait. And then um, in, in the editing, uh, it, it was a strange moment because I, I really like do talk with the team and we really like watch the rough cut and we do talk. And everyone was like, um, people, they were not convinced. They were like, mm, nothing happens. And I was like, I, I know, there is so much that happens. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, this is I, I am so happy that people connect with this uh, scene because I was really convinced because I think, first of all, what, what is cinema? It's the light, it's the, it's the person, it's a space. Um, it's just the essence and it's, sometimes you as a director need to just step back and allow uh, the cinema to happen it's not you and it's not the mastery of a craft that you can really you know do a brilliant uh, master shots no sometimes you really need to uh step back and 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 there was this moment and um but i should say that um Nico, Nico Lajar, the, um, the musician who uh, worked with as the composer, the, the, when he watched it, he, he really connected. And I was thinking that maybe like my fascination with music, that there is something intangible in, in music, something I cannot fully grasp. Uh, may, maybe that was why he connected, because he comes from uh, music. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now I, I think now everybody's happy. But for those who are unfamiliar with the recent pass of Georgia, I was wondering if you could discuss um, sort of like the dismantling of communism and sort of how um, informed by by those, you know, 30, 40 years of history, recent history. I, I don't know if there's a connection to be made. Well, of course, there is a connection. And I think that. Um, because I've been asked this question, I think that when uh, communism was, um, we finally get out of communism, there was a, um, a civil war and a really bad economic crisis. So when I was growing up, there was literally just, ne we never had electricity or uh, we did not watch films. And I think that it was such a despair. It was so difficult. I, now I can look back and see how difficult it was for my parents who were my age uh, back then. Mm -hmm. and, some, and, and then people were so, there was hopelessness. And I think that in this hopeless mind, state of mind, people needed to believe in something bigger than them. Uh, to, and also to understand the purpose and the reason maybe of their hardships. And religion just was like, ready to give the answers. And then of course, like. In, in 2003, the shift happened and we, Georgia started to become the democratic country and the infrastructure was improved and we started to become this like, economic miracle of some sort. But again, it was a lot of abuse of power and I, I think that this, this is clear uh, from the film, the relationship between the religion, the state and the abuse of power. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how the film will be perceived in Georgia, and I know that um, I, I, I need to get ready maybe for a certain reaction. Uh, but I think, um, well, that's, that's what uh, my country is going through. And, um, and also, it's not only a problem of Georgia. I think it resonates in many of the post-Soviet countries. And I think it would be interesting to see how the film will be received in uh, so, other countries. Uh, Ratsi uh, uh, Wanelli is a creative, a very close creative collaborator of yours, produces, writes with you. Um, he's the film's patriarch. He's the failed entrepreneur, the faux savior in a way. He, he, he plays many roles with the same character. I was wondering what was the process of him 
filling that character and and yeah and sort of how that relates to her her shift and her need to put herself in situations where she asserts herself by gaining control by losing control thank you it's actually such a correct interpretation to gain control by uh, giving up or to by losing control thank you uh it's well, Righty, I always wanted him <laughs> to be, and he, he's acting also in my first short film. Yes. And, but he's not an actor. He's actually a film director. And, uh, but we do write together. I, I co-wrote his script and he also co-wrote the script with me. And uh, we, we kind of uh, really bounce off the ideas uh, of, of, of each other and really talk uh, about uh, our, our work and he did not want to act he's absolutely against acting even though i think he's a brilliant actor but he doesn't want to do it and i did start to work with um other actor but i was just not uh i, I was like and it was not very constructive neither for the actor nor for me and we understood that it was just not going into the direction where I wanted the character to go because I do a lot of rehearsals before I start to shoot maybe mm -hmm. two months of rehearsals at least and and I do work on a script while I do the rehearsals because I really need the connection from the actors and what they give to the characters and then we I, I spoke with Rati and I explained that the major reason for me was uh, because I do know Rati and I wanted the character of David to have um, that dimensions. He's not an evil character and he's neither good or bad. He's a human. He, he is a human in crisis. I think he's lost. He's, he's powerless and his life lacks maybe um, meaning or happiness. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, he's an oppressor. He's the uh, he manifests power, and he does not want to understand his wife. Neither wants to really accept her for what she is. But with all these like uh, layers of the character, I wanted someone who has more like some softness in the character, but is also very assertive at the same time. And 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 Rati, he's a, he's a film director, and I guess like he has, he, he has this like um, capacity to yeah. I mean, he has the presence, very strong presence, but he's also extremely warm and really like an, a really incredible human. So I really because you cannot lie to the camera sometimes, and I think the most often you don't really need to pretend or really do anything. Like the camera sees who you are, and. Uh, and then I convinced him finally, and he stepped in maybe like two weeks before the shoot. Oh so that was a bit, yeah, that was a bit, yeah, we had a short time for, to rehearse, but we were rehearsing still every day. <laughs> well, Dia, um, this is a, a gift for cinephiles. Um, I missed the film festival circuit. I would have discovered this on the Croisette and had an epiphany and, um, uh, I'm missing out on on the interaction of sharing with some new discovery, and I'm, I'm just really thankful that I got to see it in this setting, and I'm thankful that I had a chance to just briefly touch upon a couple of points. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.